just a bunch of self-righteous assholes, if you ask me. If people minded their own damn business a lot more, then everyone else around the world would probably be having a better time and like America a whole lot more. Because people would be like, America, isn't that that awesome country where everybody's free and the government never bothers the people, but they'll fucking rape you if, they, if you try to fuck them up? Yeah, that's the kind of America I want to live in. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya, kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it goes. <laughs> how about this one? If you're going to San Francisco, put a flower in your hair. <laughs> Fucking hoss, you're a freaking hippie. I've just figured it out. If everybody would just mind your own damn business, we'd all just it'd be one big piece of love. You know, whatever. No. Dude, seriously, I just got off the phone with you. And by the way, for anybody out there who thinks I don't like Haas, dude, he's like a I love him like a brother. Um, but, geez, oh my God. Haas, listen, problem is this. Nobody minds their own business. Nobody's going to mind their own business. And that's just the fact of it. You know, that, that that is literally a fact. Look at Putin. Look what he's doing. We just had this conversation, so I almost kind of feel stupid talking to you about this. But, you know, between China and Putin literally eyeballing the world, <laughs> you know, I, there's, there's something to be said for being proactive in, in everything in life, whether it's your personal life or a, as, as a country. Now, I know... People have said, well, the United States acts like an, you know, a bunch of imperialist assholes. That's why the whole world hates us. You know what? I don't care that the whole world hates us. I don't. All I care about is that they respect us. Which, by the way, they used to do up until, well, up until BHO took over the show. <laughs> and, once again, I have talked to you about this. Like I mentioned in our conversations, you've got Putin who is literally taking bombers and testing our airspace. You don't do that to countries that you respect. You know, basically, that's his, that's his way of telling Obama to fuck off, shut the fuck up, sit over in your corner, you know, and let me rape the rest of the world. And literally what Putin's doing, and I, you know what, I got a lot of respect for Putin. I don't like him. I think he's a dirtbag piece of shit that's trying to, trying to turn back the hands of time. But you know what? He's eyeballing the Antarctic. He realizes that there's a lot of natural resources up there, oil and whatnot, and he's going to take it. And basically what he's doing to us is saying, you're, you're my bitch, you're not the fucking, you're not going to stand up, you're not going to say squat, you're going to sit over there and sing kumbaya while I take the natural resources of the Antarctic. <sighs> Listen, you know, it, it, say what you want about uh, the way America has operated since, let's just say since, well, when we literally became uh, number one in the world, Okay, I know that's going to piss off some people, but that's the way it was. Uh, it was right after World War One, literally. We, we started to come into our own right after World War One, And after World War Two, we were the undisputed kings of the planet. Now, Stalin would probably argue that. And for the next, you know, what, 60 years, we would be engaged in a Cold War with the Soviets. Um, which, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, you can say what you want about that. But, you know, we went to the moon for a reason. I don't think we would ever went to the moon if not for that, that scenario, that whole uh, good versus evil, dark versus light, evil Soviets versus, you know, the shining, you know, I don't know, mansion on a hill or whatever it was that Reagan called us. Um, you know, you have, you can't, you have to be proactive. It's like a football team that has, that has spies out there uh, uh, watching you know, the competitors' um, practices. It's, it's, you know, it's a proactive approach to, you know, whatever. Well, and say what you want about it, but literally we became what we became. Previous to that, you know, what were we on this planet? You know, a bunch of colonists <laughs> that managed to shake off the king. You know, I, I mean, you know, Haas, listen, I understand what you're saying. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, everybody minds their own business, liberties are respected, and everybody's just... Keep it on, keep it on, you know, and everything's beautiful and, you know, nobody treads on thee. But we don't live in a perfect world. We live in a very fucked up world. And for the most part, I hate to say it, Hoss, but there are a lot of people on this planet that would like to see us go under. Now, having said that, not because of anything, that, not because we bombed them or not because we did this or that, 
just because it's the you know, I've said this in other videos too. I mean, people hate number one. They hate it. Now I see a lot of people in the United States of America that are apparently sick of being number one. Don't want any part of it. Just want to be able to kind of like do their own thing, go sit in a corner, and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> you know. But I like being number one. There's a lot of advantages to being number one. You know, there just is. You know, you can call me a neocon if you want. But I want a government that's going to be proactive around the globe in ensuring that we have the natural resources. You know, listen, I'm not hating on Putin for doing what he's doing because Putin's doing what he's doing for his country. He sees the natural resources in Antarctica. He sees the sea passages there opening up. And you know what? He's going to take it. You know, he's going to take it because that's the best thing that he could do for Russia. Or I, I still prefer to call them the Soviet Union because the way I see it, it'll be back to that in no time anyway. Okay, uh, under, under your leadership, Haas, let's just say, Haas, you were president. President Haas, okay, you would never do it. Well, let's say, well, you know what, better scenario. Let's say that you were the president of, uh, of Russia you know, or prime minister, whichever one Putin is now. Every time he switches over, he, gets, he keeps his power. But let's say you were, you were the president of Russia. You would never... Under the way you operate, you would never, ever even think about going up to Antarctica because to you it would be like, well, that's not our place in the world. We, well, that's not, we, we shouldn't be doing that. We should mind our own business. Well, <laughs> you know, well, you know, um, we're going to be a day late and a dollar short under that attitude. You know, literally. Was it our business to go to the moon? We spent a lot of taxpayers' money, you know. I, I, you know, I mean, and I know it makes me sound like a Democrat, but I think it was money well spent. You know, oh god, now I'm sounding like a Democrat. I gotta go. <laughs> anyway, Haas, you were you were you were wondering why I didn't make a, a video response. Sorry, it just took so long. I it, for some reason it slid under the radar. You know, it's just been a busy couple of days for me. Um, anyway, I love Condoleezza Rice. I know I you know, it took me all the way to the end of this video to say that. <laughs> I love Condoleezza Rice. Um, I like a proactive government. Um, I don't want I don't want to be restrained by isolationism because in the end that just screws you. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Hustle, hope you're having a great weekend. Everybody take care. See ya!